So we are going to head back over the water and we've got a couple of things we want to finish up there. I need to check the phasmid traps again. I'm, I'm dying. I need to find this thing. I hope it's real. Please, baby. Please, baby. And we also need to give the jacket to the old woman, but we've got to wait 30 minutes for her to wash the jacket. Then we can take it back to the guy. And then... Oh, no, wait there. We haven't. We've got to radio this in. Snow covers the white and blue police library of the motor carriage. The white colours nearby melt together. Wait, why am I even thinking about this? Do something important. Something murder related. There's always something important. Does this mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery? Even at a standstill, the unibody Cooper Kinema looks sleek and dynamic. The cabin is tilted frontward to give it more of an aggressive, hunched look. Someone's waxed it recently. That machine really puts the local back in locomotion. Very cool. <laughs> the lieutenant smiles ever so slightly. You want to take a closer look? What's it packing there? 130. Let out a whistle. Mama's serving some serious macaroni. <laughs> you lost me there. He's looking at you perplexed. 130 kilowatts is a lot of power, Kim. The Kanima is fast. Feels right at home on the raised motor tract. Hard to find something that could overtake it. A fast machine. Yes. There's gentleness in the lieutenant's voice as his eyes run over the vehicle's contours. An extraordinary machine. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put something in it. Flare it up. Slap it down. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. Ever thought about switching to helium headlights? Actually, I have a pair at home, just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the bell ballasts first. If you ever get this case solved, maybe we can do it together. Maybe, he replies with an ap apologetic smile and nods. Yes, definitely maybe. Definitely maybe. Right, we've got to ring this body in on the, on the pier. So... Right, before we do this, I've actually forgot to do this this session. Down and up so we don't get any ridiculously loud noises. Uh, use the radio. I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment, you can hear her shuffling through some papers. Can you please describe the body, age, sex, cause of death? An unidentified middle-aged man, height 150 to 175, dark hair, medium build, looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were some bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No, it seems like an accident. No field autopsy necessary, she repeats. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? It's from Central Jamrock Public Library. It belongs to someone named Billy Mejan. Good, you have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case on or should I assign someone else? We're taking the case. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify a man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Um, connect me to the public library, even though it's like 12 o'clock at night. They're closed. 10 or 6, so we'll ring them tomorrow. Good. That's it. Happy days. So we've got a new lead for that tomorrow. Now we've just got to get across. Back across to the fishing village. We can check a few traps on the way as well. It's a shame she's given up looking for the the phasmid because it seems like her and her husband's the entire life depended on it. You know what I mean? Full of locusts, weak and unhealthy. Nothing. It's absolutely nothing.
Right, here we are. Where's the old woman? I hope she hasn't went to bed yet. Sits in her chair, continuing with her chores. As she does so, she quietly hums to herself. The buzz of electric lights blends together with the slow rumble of the ocean waves at night. You're still up? Yes. I can't really sleep anymore. Only a few hours a night. It happens when you grow older. She sloshes the water in the bucket around her for a bit. Okay. I've got 30 minutes to spare. Would you still wash this jacket for me? Bish bash bosh. Hand it over then and I'll see what I can do. Item gained. Fallen Windbreaker. Must say I'm proud of, the, proud of this one, she nods, handing the jacket back to you. It's pretty nice underneath all that filth. I hope you take better care of it than the last owner. <laughs> I can talk to her about the, the documents. I'm not going to do that. Ignorance is bliss, of course. Let me have a look at this. Plus one pain threshold, plus one half light, minus one drama. Sweat like a pig. That's pretty nice, that. Oh yeah, yeah baby. Where's my police thing? There we go. Right, looks like we'll see if the homeless men are still up and I'm gonna give them that, that back. Tequila sunset. Yeah baby. Okay, here's your jacket. Fresh washed. Yeah, it was pretty filthy, though, so I got a clean for you. A look of consternation crosses the man's face. He looks at you, then at his bottle, then back at you. What the fuck are you talking about, Tequila? So you're saying this isn't your jacket? Fallon, that's medium concept stuff. Not my style at all. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe you should lay off the booze. It's fucking with your head. <laughs> I'm calling it. It's neurological. Well, your loss. I'm keeping the jacket for myself. Get in. So we've got to keep it anyway. I don't think I'll really use it because I've got pretty high stats and no skills anyway, but... This shit is so medium concept. I wouldn't touch it with a stick. But yeah, okay. I'm sure it might look great on you. <laughs> it's an okay jacket, the Lieutenant Shrugs, if you're into that look. That's it. Be seeing you, mate. Oh look, Kim wants to chat. Um, I've been meaning to have a little chat with you about your sense of style. Why I, man? My style? What about it? It's legendary among these parts. I'm glad you finally started dressing a little more like an officer of the RCM. Keep it up. Your half-brother is proud to stand beside you. You like this? I feel really cramped in my style. Why aren't you wearing a pig suit? Regular cop, regular clothes. The lieutenant regards you for a moment, unsure whether you're making a joke or not, and if so, whether he should acknowledge it. Right, detective. You are one regular cop. You know the expression, the clothes make the man, the right outfit, in the right situation, can make all the differences in the world. Well, that is true in this game. You're a sharp-dressing man. I could be style buddies with you. Yes! Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Detective. <laughs> A warm smile. Anyway, we should probably get back to the case. Let's go. Drama. Wow. So someone's been a little boring. What? Yes, my standard liege. Someone's seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought. I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. Look. I'm just trying to do my job. No need for extravagance. Of course you do. Let's get right to it. My lord's copper type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll send out a telefax. Wait, wait. This is my copper type. Eh, fuck it. Why not? Send out the telefax then. I'm not ashamed. I'm opting in. You gained. Regular law official. Done and done. <laughs> regular law official. I've got no room for it. I've got no room for anything. I've got to wait till Wasteland of Reality finishes before I see if it's good or not. Okay, so it looks like you've got a bit of the normal in you. A touch of the regular. Four grams of Johnny Normal Cop. Who would you have thunk it? 
You, the extreme, the extremest of all cops. You said some pretty boring things back there, and now you have two choices. You can either leave it behind and forget about it, or you can try and utilise your normalcy. Internalise it. Get a touch of vanilla back into the heron-flavoured egg and licorice ice cream of your mind. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. Right, so I've done the jacket. What else is there to do? The traps and all that. We could check the boardwalk and check the island. Call Jamrock, we can do that tomorrow morning. Um, it could help the ravers. I need to get a reality lowdown. But I don't think I've got enough stats. But then again, I have got some perk points, so... Let's try that now. I'm just trying to finish up all these side quests before we go into tomorrow. So what do I need? You're back, good. What can I help you with at this late hour? It's night, don't you ever sleep? Matter of fact, I don't. She takes another sip. Why is that? I have a medical condition of my own. Nothing unusual though. I'm old, you see. Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be be complimentary. No you're not. You look young. Thank you. I do what I can to remain presentable. Right, so what do I need to find out? The The reality. Conceptualization, bloody hell. Impossible 20. How the hell am I going to get this? Right, let's have a look. I'm going to have to put some points in it, aren't I? Conceptualization. It's the two white t shirts, I know that. I thought it was. That one. Don't have anything else with conceptualization on it. Right. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Three percent. It's gonna be it is actually impossible. Like what is my conceptualization even at? Four. I can only put one point in this to make it five. It's not going to make much of a difference. Fuck it. I'm just going to try it. Failed. Fuck me. It's impossible, this. I think this is only possible. Or maybe it's one of them skill checks that you just can't pass. I'm never ever going to have enough points to do that in my... Well, I can't even raise it, raise it past one. Even if I put points in it, it's still 3%. You're back, good. Oh, night what never sleep. Why is that? Look young, fantastic. Right, hold on. I'm gonna save it here. I'm gonna fucking get this. If only for the simple fact that I hate having little things in my journal that I can't complete. You're back, good. What Come on, baby, shows the magic. With? Magic, magic. Failed. And there's nothing else you can do. What the fuck? I think we're gonna have to come back here later, lads. If I manage to get my conceptualization skill like up further. Hmm. I'm feeling lucky, I'm gonna give it one last try, then we're leaving. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Ah yeah, fuck, can I do it? Right, done. Thank you. See ya. Impossible. There's no way we can do this. Right then. Under the traps. If I'm honest, I'm a bit gutted about that. Oh, we can take her out on a date as well if we get rid of Kim. But I'll leave that for later. I'm going to keep him with me. Oh, there was something here. A little black swallow circles above you. You hear a chirp. I can 
can't see it. The water runs from the west. The sources upstream of Broken Pipe. So let me get to this trap down here first. Nope. Nothing. I think we're going to be able to look on this phasmid side of things like. No phasmid anyway. One more to check. Let me have a look on this board to see if the documents have appeared magically. Nope. Oh, I can't get up there, can I? I've actually forgotten where the last one is. We've checked three so far. You pick up the handset as a tone, fuck it. Let's make some dodgy phone calls. <laughs> See what this does. Calling. Still calling. This feels wrong. Should you be doing this? End of tone. Someone picks up. Pierre? Is that you, Pierre? The voice is female and sounds about 100 years old. Yes, it's me, Pierre. So nice of you to find the time to call me. It gets so lonely. Even the animals have died. It gets lonely even when you're with people. Are you sure you're Pierre? Your voice is different. I... There... Her voice is drowned out by white noise. Sounds like waves washing, washing a beach. Going in volume until the call suddenly disconnects. You get a sinking feeling that makes you look as if Lieutenant Kitsuragi overheard you. To your relief, he did not. Again, seriously? Fuck, I'm going balls deep in this. Someone with a masculine voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. What a douche name. Change it. Change your name. <laughs> I'm doing dodgy phone calls. What are you? Like five? A woman's voice shouts something in the background. And when Gerard speaks again, his voice is hushed. Thanks for calling, asshole. Phone hanging up. Fucking have to do it again. Nothing. It's going to be none, is it? Stop calling me, man. Someone picks up. The voice on the other end is slightly hysterical. I'll get you your money, alright? I just need till tonight. Let me work. Ooh, a slight change of plan. I want it to deliver to the whirling and rags. Consider your debt paid. We can get him killed. Slight change of plans. I want this delivered to the whirling and rags in Martinez. <laughs> Tethys, I, uh, the young man realises something. Hey, you're not Tethys. Screw you and don't ever call here again. You're fucking with some serious people. Disconnect tone. A single hmm lets you know the lieutenant is ready to move now. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm tired, a man answers fast this time. His voice is hoarse from cigarettes. You hear typing in the background. Sounds like he hasn't talked to anyone in quite a while. I'm tired too. If I could go just one month without writing, no two months, I could regenerate my brain. Fucking liberalism. The man disappears with a sigh. You do not hear the customary disconnect tone, just silence in the ha handset. The machine is still waiting for you to dial a number. Look at you, the call went too fast for the payphone to register. You can still make a new one without paying. Dial a random number with your eyes closed. How are then? You close your eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial, then pull down on the number, then move one up and repeat the motion twice. Strange. This is not how you started before. Wait, what did I just do? You dialed 001. This is not the area code of Revachol. It's another destination on another isola, some far off nation state. Keep dialing. 41, 44, 47. The rotary dial feels cold from the CA. Keep doing it. 11, 17, 361. Your fingers keep moving like a spider. Every time the ring 
rotates back with a little ring of metal like a bell tolling. There's more. Yes, 451, 67, 451. You are going deeper now, into some unknown place far away from this island of matter. And its telecommunication networks finish it. 451. You've dialed God knows how many numbers. The headset has been waiting silently to relay a signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think. But it does. A connection. An ultra long distance call. Your ear fills with a crackle. The wash of a strange ocean full of white noise. A little bird starts ringing in there. Not like the local call and tone before, no. A small ring in a cage of distortion far away. A distant network of phones. Calling. Calling in the night. The saddest sound in the world. Both pitiful and terrifying. You feel your pulse rising with each ring. Calling still. Ringing by the bedside of a dark but capacious apartment with long windows. You know this to be true. The handset starts slipping from your sweaty palm. Your breathing is heavy. Long windows. Kim. Volition. Hang up. Long windows, how do I know that? You just do, and you know it's going to hurt. Let it call more. Calling. Fucking hell, anticipation's killing us. Then the ocean breaks. Out of the depths, a woman's voice emerges, small. The dearest thing you've ever heard. Hello? She sounds sleepy. Hello? Mm. She hums, her voice warm from sleep. Who is this? Dora, who is this? The connection is bad. Dora? Is this my lass? Is this my ex? And that's why he's dialed it from... from habit. The connection is bad. Dora, the name feels like a gift. A gift that was meant for you to make it possible to live. And fight. In the distorted distance, you hear someone turning next to her. Bed springs rattle. Oh, no way. That's right, though. She has moved on. Don't react. Whatever you do, don't react to the last thing. Don't react. It doesn't matter if you react or not. You still think you hear a man's voice in the background. It's covered in pain and white noise. Your voice is so beautiful. No, no. It's you, isn't it? Shit, she knows. I want to die. What? <laughs> it takes a second for her to realise what you said. I want to live with you. Oh no. Is that you? Her voice sounds like it's waking up now, still plaintive, tired. I'm an ultra high net worth individual. I understand how reality works. I have seen into it. My mind is clear. You're not a high net worth individual, Harry. You're drunk. Shit. Harry, how do you know my name? Because it's me. Look, I don't understand what you're saying or why you're calling me. You seem drunk. I'm not drunk or high. I'm just hurt. Why does it hurt to talk to you? It's heavy as sin. The white noise howls. Hey. Do you know what time it is? It's so late here. Sounds like she's looking for a clock on the, ni the nightstand. It's four o'clock, Harry. I need to wake up in two hours. Where are you? Where are you going? I am the law. I want to talk about me. Who am I? You sound like you know me. What do you want to talk about? Shit. That we haven't talked about already. I want answers. This is bad. You feel your right hand on the handset cramping up with pain. Where are you? You sound like you're in an another world. I'm in Morova. Sleeping. Where are you going in two hours? To work. Where? The academy. Where I work. The academy, that sounds better than my job. I'm happy. Shit. Oh my god, I'm causing myself immense suffering. 
My heart hurts. I'm going to have a heart attack. I am the law detective. I'm doing a case. Mm, I want to say that my heart hurts. I'm going to go with I am the law. It doesn't matter. The case doesn't matter. I'm going to solve it. Harry. Disconnect tone. The machine ran out of money. Fuck. Run to the church, home, anywhere but here. Anything but call her again. I'm going to ring her again. 26 poles of the rotary dial, the machine eats the coin in a terrifying ocean of distance rustles in your ear. In the middle of it, a familiar ring, small distorted, calling. Let it call. Come on baby. It looks like she does not want to pick up Harry, stop scaring her. Just let it ring. Why? Come on, you know why. Let it ring. A sad voice answers, dressed in distortion. Underneath it she is naked and warm under a blanket. I need to know who you are. Who are you? Please. Fuck. I'm going to hang up now, okay? Don't, 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 don't. Come on, baby. You want my money? Punch the phone. I'm never going to find out who she is, am I? Although we know who she is, she's never going to give me that. The cold metal is hard and your knuckles bleed. Takes your mind away from that voice, for one second at least. That's enough now, officer. The lieutenant stands at a distance. You want money? You want fucking money? Punch the phone again. <laughs> it didn't give you any fun for that money. Your hand is swelling up. Officer, that's enough. Let's return to work. Bloody hell. Blood drips from your knuckles to the sand. Drip, drip, drip. That was bloody intense. I'll heal one more of these. There we go. That is absolutely devastating. Have you noticed every time we ring someone, they never ever give us answers? Oh, look, the body's gone. Now, this is the boardwalk. It said I need to look for evidence of bullet holes, didn't it? Um, Check the boardwalk for bullet traces. I'm not having much luck here, like... Hmm. No dice. No dice. Oh look, this is where that woman was. She's gone now, like. Right? That was pretty devastating, that. Dora, she's called. My ex is Dora and she's with someone else. That is just fucking devastating. Tragic, even. Unopenable. 20. Impossible 20. I think whenever you see a skill check that says impossible, it just means like it's simply you just, you just can't do it. I'll leave it for later. It'll be a bit like that one with the woman. We'll have to check out my reality. Now hold on, where's the trap? I thought it was over here. Yep. Yeah. Come on, please be the phasmid. Dead and dying locusts. Nothing. Well, we are shit out of luck here. Nothing. Right, come on then. I 
think I'm going to head to the, the church. It's the only place I haven't been. And we've got a couple of side quests there anyways for the, the drug guys in the tent, the ravers in the tent. We've got like 55 minutes before we have to go to bed. Heavy wooden doors more than twice your height stand, in sh stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock. Carelessly drilled into the wood, open the padlock. Let's go. As you do, you hear an echo of the doomed commercial area, its black holes and dusty machines, then the feeling passes. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum. In the heart of the city. Why, hello there. A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. Okay. Could it be the crab man? That the girl saw. Walk here, not run. This grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. Feels like it's trying to become one with the church. The prayer book has been left open. Blackboard is filled with complex equations, they look recent. Something to do with radio frequencies. Two decks of reel to reel tape spinning on empty. More of the fault lightning patterns you saw outside. Portable Harmon. Wow, she tape recorder. Someone's siphoning electrical current from outside into this antenna. Ah, oh, wait there, look. A machine stands in the corner, washed over by figures of the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer says the lieutenant, stepping closer, and this time it's already turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. These machines sometimes harbour traps, he thinks, alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yes, but the machine just looks like the one in the doomed commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. He inspects the machine's framework, careful not to touch anything. The one you saw earlier was the REM Civic. This is the REM Perfect. A prefect, a model number RC7024, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a REM compatible interim printer. Let me investigate a step behind the computer. You've seen Virison play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine glowing frame reflected back from the diamond shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Look inside the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a curb-like crisscross of filaments, smouldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says in a black marker, Log February March. This is the machine's filament memory. Press play to access its contents. The speakers come to life, static steeps through the machine. Playing on magnetic driver, an old lady greets you. Her it's the same lady as what we saw on the, the bottom of my bet with the... The failed RPG thing. It is. Good evening, Fortress Accident on St. Brune. This is the East Insulindon Repeater Station 1. It's the same woman you spoke to through the radio computer, yep, in the doomed commercial area. Right. I looked inside the core, but the tape on the filament just said Log Feb March. Good, please report the password. I don't know it. That's right. Okay. Let's leave.
So we still need to find the password for that. I still think it's in that um, that frozen, the freezer. It's gotta be. Plus one empathy shoes. A spider has spun its web around the wood carved pillar. I can't, what, what's he doing circles? What's he doing? A cracked pane of glass, colourful. A scarf, plus one pain threshold, very nice. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. A figure drawn in frost on the window, de depicting a deer. The bowl is filled with water. A live wire runs directly into it. Could these wires work as a con as contact microphones? Aha! Perception. The silence in this part of the church is almost palpable. All the shift and matter and the sh shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand just in the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it. But for the faintest of hums. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Yell as loud as you can. Your voice is barely audible, not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. It's unnerving. Stomp your feet and clap your hands. You produce a few muffled humps, thumps, after which the silence feels even more total somehow. Turn to Kim, what's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head, then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Almost nothing, and it's beginning to worry me. Not really, but it's extraordinary. I've never experienced anything like this. I wonder why the church was built with such strange acoustics. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. What if it's something paranatural? It's probably nothing. Whatever it is, it's definitely real. Something odd's happening around us. The lieutenant does, doesn't reply, but you can sense him tense up next to you. Look up into the bell tower. Orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. Try to see beyond the shadows. It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and is making its way towards you through all the other shadows. Follow its movements. It's not a shadow anymore, becoming more substantial. As it gets closer, the shape of an animal descends. Officer, is there something up there? The lieutenant follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is you're seeing. Oh no, you've lost sight of it. Where did it go? Prepare for an attack on the ceiling? Yes. The darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. It's climbing, climbing down. Holding on the beams, blink. There it is. You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's possible to talk to it? Damn, that's the crab man. Tiago. Is that a man? A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building? He is studying you intently. The crab man. Um, are you the crab man? The man leans forward, a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. I bet your alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, hon. <laughs> but don't worry. Everything's gonna be alright. You've come to the right place. 
Hey, este, señorita de puto. The right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of the bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? We do, Kim. I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe the ceiling climbing too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already, sheesh. I guess I have a bit of a problem, and it's been getting out of hand lately, but... This does good, eh? I see deep inside you. Your body and spirit are suffering greatly from overindulgence, and you don't even know it. Great. More patronising. I'm very in touch with my suffering. Not all of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc every know is wreaking on your mind and your spirit. Necesitas parar, homie. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. Look at these crazies. What is this shit? Who do you think you are? Some crazy guy under the roof? That's all well and good, but we need to talk about the unlicensed occupation, no. What is this shit? It don't matter who I am, way. I'm just bringing you that message of their mother's love. She don't want you to hang yourself on your own stubbornness. His words echo in the cold air of the church. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams waiting for you to take it all in. This mother of silence sounds like a serious player. You might want to be careful until you find out what you're dealing with. Do you know where the other spooker is? Point at the strange machines around you. Other spooker? Oh, esta vieta, muy tinosa, he laughs. The no homes. Wait, so there is another person living in the church. And it's a Vegeta. No, I just call her Viegeta because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. He scratches his head, or maybe not that young. Age is just one of the many masks we wear. Wait, what if it's Ruby? The lieutenant seems to be thinking the same. He takes out his little notebook. Did it ever seem to you like she was hiding here from something? You mean like a fugitive? He glances at the abandoned radio computer on the other side of the nave, pulsing with light. Then he shakes his head. No man, quite the opposite. I don't think she cares much about authority or anything else for the matter. Maybe only about her machines. I see. The lieutenant seems contented with the answer. And where is she now? I told you, Holmes, I don't know. How can you not know when you live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We've got different interests. So you've got nothing else to tell me how she looks, where she do what she does, who is she? I'm afraid not, Essie. You just have to wait until she comes back or he shrugs. Or search through her radio computer. Have you by any chance heard the Vegeta say the password? Yes. Too many times, Essie. You need it for something? No need to overdo it, he won't mind sharing it with you. It's for a first degree murder. Honestly, I just want to break into a radio computer, see what's on it. Don't sweat it, Vato. The password is after life death. Get in, we've got it. That is true, but what comes after death? What do you think of that? Makes me almost pity. La nihilista pequinata. When I hear it. I want to ask you again, are you the crab man? Never know myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you've got for me, I won't stop you from using it. To be fair, it's more like a spider. If you're not a crab, then what are you? He considers this for a moment. I always thought of myself more like a flame flickering along the rafters and beams. He pauses. It may be that I've got to work on my technique. What were you before you become a crab man? I was in a gang. We. But my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. So many people losing their memory. A certain portent of doom. <laughs> I lost my memory too. And it haunts me. He 
looks at you as if he wants to pat you on the back. No man, you gotta let that shit go. Then the mother's light touch will fill you with rapture. Do you remember your name, sir? Tiago is my name, but those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak. Your place among your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. My name is Harry, extend your hand for a greeting. Wait there. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. He ignores your hand. His limbs a mere shadow below the ceiling. What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there, a way out, into nothingness. He nods towards the ceiling. This church was built around it, for purpose, for purposes of veneration. I circle it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'll be pure enough to go drink from it directly. What will happen when you drink from this perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed, finally at one with the state of the world before reality began. Who's the mother of silence? That's no simple question, Essie. She's one who can't be painted or sculpted. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes. No one ever will. His adoration is beyond sexual. The cavity is something that no human form has. How did he even find this place? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here back when I still had mental worries. Sorry, material worries. Up there I realised the true purpose of what the church was. We've been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now. We. It didn't belong to me. Are these yours? Show him the scarf and shoes. I think they were a long time ago. He looks at the red clothing items in your hand. I had to shed them like skins to get closer to the centre of silence. You can have them. I don't need them anymore. Well, I was going to have them anyway, like, but <laughs> thank you. I still don't understand what you're doing here. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. It doesn't really make sense for you to sing if the mother, if she's the mother of silence. He laughs. I don't mean literal singing, Holmes. It's the mother of silence we're talking about. It's the singing of a burning heart. You may be thinking, but if fire crackles, no, Holmes. That's the material that's burning. The flames themselves are without a sound. You sure you didn't switch one drug for another? It's not like all... It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Guess you have a point. Other questions. You've been here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? A police raid a while back, he responds. Did you witness it? Not really, or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside, right? i seen them. Guessing they're the ones who call me a crab. Probably scared of me. Did they have a reason to be scared? So what do you think about the nightclub that is? Why not? They wouldn't bother me. None. I'm usually way up there. Imbibing. Imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. Okay then. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he likes to think. Okay then. Tiago. I think we're done here, Essie. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure whether we'll find our suspect here. That certainly was interesting. And at least we know he doesn't mind the, the ravers moving in. So, might be an option. Right, what else? Oh, I've got the password, haven't we? I'll tell you what. I'm going to call it an episode here. I've already see, I'll save it again. I'll call an episode here. 
and when we come back it'll be a perfect spot to investigate this machine okay lads hope you enjoyed the episode see you in the next one